All right, we're going to jump right into DPS rankings by tier, starting with Nox Ramos, the first raid in Wrath of the Lich King, also known as Tier 7, and provides sets very similar to Vanilla WoW's Tier 3, which is also Nox Ramos back in Vanilla WoW. So in this tier, Warlocks, Rogues, Death Knights, and Mages are at the top. Now, some of the reasons for this is because Rogues received a powerful new AoE ability in Wrath of the Lich King called Fan of Knives, which instantly throws both weapons at all targets within 8 yards, causing 105% weapon damage with daggers and 70% weapon damage with all other weapons. This is incredible. Um, but you know what? Assassination had some very, very unique things. Now, early on in Wrath of the Lich King, gear did not have a lot of armor penetration, and that is very useful for other specializations like Fury, Combat, and, and so on. But for Assassination Rogues, where their main DPS comes from Poison, they do not need armor penetration. They also play very differently from other specs and are unique for that reason. Now, when there's no warrior or druid in an assassina assassination rogues party or raid uh, to apply a bleed effect on your target, then you have to use Garrote or Rupture yourself in order to apply the new talent at the end of the assassination tree called Hunger for Blood, which increases your damage by 5%, but only works uh, when there's a bleed effect on the target. Now, Assassination Rogues use Mutilate to generate combo points, and then use Envenom, the finishing move which instantly applies poison damage and actually does quite a lot of damage. Of course, this is nature damage and goes through armor, which is why, once again, Assassination Rogues do not need armor penetration to make them very good, which is why they are very excellent early on in Wrath of the Lich King, where that stat is scarce. Now let's move on and talk a little bit about Frost Death Knights and why they were so good in Nox Ramus. Well, they had Howling Blast. This blasts the target with a Frigid Wind dealing uh, 200 to 214 Frost damage to all enemies within 10 yards. This is a powerful AoE ability that really sets them apart from Unholy Death Knights who don't have as powerful AoE. Notice that this ability does Frost damage, which again helps uh, the class bypass armor. Now another similar ability that sets Frost ahead of other melee DPS is Frost Strike, dealing Frost damage, which again, during a time with little armor penetration, shines for the melee damage dealer. This is weapon damage, 55% of weapon damage, plus 48 as Frost damage, and it costs Runic Power for the Frost Death Knight. Now, Affliction is a great spec throughout all of Wrath of the Lich King. They got so many abilities. The specialization has seriously been revamped since TBC, now with much better damage capabilities rather than just being a utility spec. Warlocks now benefit from more dot abilities and talents that empower them, such as a completely reworked Maldiction, a new powerful ability called Haunt, and Deaths embrace a new talent which even boosts their damage further. With the addition of the improved Fel Hunter talent, the Affliction Warlock provides a very unique buff to the raid, Fell Intelligence. This buff stacks with both Mage and Priest buffs. Now, out of all the three possible specializations, Affliction offers possibly the most powerful execution ability in the game, Drain Soul. This drains the soul of the target, causing shadow damage over 15 seconds. If the target is at or below 25% health, Drain Soul causes four times the normal damage. Incredible. So Affliction Warlocks have great AoE and single target damage. Very, very good spec overall. Now Demonology Warlocks are also up here in uh, the S tier because, um, of course, Demonic Pact is very nice. It's a spell power buff, which is only for Demonology. Now, Demonology does have some very nice abilities. Uh, however, it can uh, be a bit inconsistent. Uh, you know, Metamorphosis is very good. Uh, that, you know, has a cooldown, long cooldown, actually, uh, which does, uh, you know, kind of hurt the sustain uh, damage of Demonology. Now, the last S tier for tier 7 Nox Ramus is the Arcane Mage. Arcane Mage was very, very powerful in TBC, and it's quite powerful at the beginning of Wrath of the Lich King. Arcane Blast being the staple of the Arcane Mage, just spamming Arcane Blasts, uh, you, you getting those procs to reset your stacks. You're going to also be providing a new 3% damage increase buff called Arcane Empowerment. This is going to be very powerful. It will uh, th give 3% increased damage to the entire raid, which makes Ferocious Inspiration the BM Hunter's Utility, which grants 1% 
increased damage entirely useless. Um, so Arcane Mage is just making uh, BM Hunters completely obsolete. Okay, let's move on and talk about Ulduar, Tier 8. Uh, with Ulduar level gear, Affliction Warlock is still very strong. We've got Rogue doing quite well. Uh, we've got Death Knights up there. Feral, particularly, um, is very powerful in Ulduar. Benefiting from the longer and more AoE intensive fights frequently found in there. Frost DK has a lot of AoE options. Rogue Fan of Knives is incredibly powerful. Now the reason Feral is so powerful is because there's a new ability that you can learn at level 71 called Swipe, which is used in cat form. This swipes all nearby enemies, inflicting 250% weapon damage. This is a pretty insane AoE for kitties, and there's also a talent called Feral Instinct, which increases the damage done by your swipe ability by 30%, and reduces the chance enemies have to detect you by prowling, the first half of that really being the important part. This makes Feral Druids actually have very, very good AoE damage. Now let's move on and talk a little bit about Trial of the Crusader. I think this one's a little interesting. As you can see, Death Knight is the only S tier because it's really in a tier of its own. Now, if we think back to Wrath of the Lich King, patch 3.1 introduced so many nerfs to Death Knights. Now, if you remember back in the day when Wrath of the Lich King first came out, Death Knights were incredibly broken. Blood Death Knights were a DPS spec back then, and it was so broken. Frost was the tanking spec, and I mean, Blood Death Knights just stomped everything back in the day. Well, the Death Knight set bonus was so good in Tier 9 that it actually got nerfed. Now, the Death Knight Tier 9 set bonus in patch 3.3.5... Um, is in the nerf state, of course, so we do have to keep that in mind, but it's still pretty broken. Now, the patch note reads, uh, regarding the 4P set bonus, this set bonus no longer grants Frost Fever a chance to be a critical strike. It still grants that possibility to Blood Plague. So, they're still pretty strong. Fortunately for Death Knights, even after the nerf, that 4P set bonus is great, and they still dominate in Tier 9. The 2P set bonus is also incredibly strong. At 2 pieces, your Blood Strike and Heart Strike abilities have a chance to grant you 100 180 additional strength for 15 seconds. Now, if you remember how Death Knights play, Blood Strike is typically used uh, for Blood Runes. Uh, Heart Strike is a typically used for um, Blood Death Knights, but Blood Strike is for everyone, all Death Knights. So these are two reasons why Death Knights are quite overpowered in Tier 9 Trial of the Crusaders, strictly from a DPS standpoint. Now last, we have Ice Crown Citadel. This is the final raid of Wrath of the Lich King and the rating I used for my best DPS video. Uh, once all items are available, what is the best class? You can, of course, see depending on the encounters and the items available, a lot can change. In Ice Crown Citadel, lots of armor penetration is finally available, making combat rogues and fury warriors exceptionally dominating. Fire mages now have enough spell critical strike rating on their gear to go absolutely insane with Hot Streak along with Torment the Weak to be absolutely, completely overpowered. Retribution also now has access to Shadow Morn along with Fury Warriors and Death Knights and can absolutely wreck the damage meters. Of course, the Death Knight can do the same and Feral is another class that is very strong when played correctly with the right gear as well in Endgame Wrath of the Lich King. Now you might be wondering, what class is best throughout the entire expansion? Well, if we assigned a numerical value to each uh, each tier, perhaps S being 1 and D being 5, and then added each spec from each raid tier and then averaged the, result, the results, we could hypothetically get a weighted ranking of which class and spec is best overall throughout the entire Wrath of the Lich King expansion, taking into account raids where the spec underperforms and overperforms. And we might end up with something like this. Now, this is the weighted average for all raids, once again, S tier being one point and uh, D tier being five. So the lower the score, the better. You can see, of course, there is some subjectivity with my <laughs> ratings. I'm sure you'll see in the comments section, everyone has their own opinions. But uh, from my ratings, Affliction seems pretty great throughout. You can see Trial of the Crusader falls a little behind. But overall, Affliction is incredibly powerful in Wrath of the Lich King. You can see assass Assassination actually starts out strong and just slowly throughout the expansion becomes worse and worse. So another great spec there. Frost Death Knight, sort of in the same boat, starting out very strong and then slowly getting weaker. Unholy, kind of a, just being average throughout the entire expansion. But I'd say above average throughout the expansion. 
expansion. We've got combat being uh, sort of worse early on, but slowly getting better. We see feral with very similar trends there. Arcane being the opposite, being good early and worse later, and so on. So you can kind of see here what what class would you choose that would be access to would have access to the specs that are just always good at some point. Well, I would say Warlock is a solid choice, followed closely by Rogues, Death Knights, Druid, and Mage. I'll say Hunter with Marksmanship spec is the definition of average throughout the expansion, not good nor bad, sort of in the middle of the road. And then you can see the rest are a bit below average overall throughout the expansion, but some of the specs get their day to shine, like Retribution, you know, at the end of the expansion, or Fury. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to give it a like if you liked it, and subscribe for more. My name is Toyhouse, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.